Be seated. Well, you may have heard the story of the professor that walked into class the first day of class and he brought a tennis ball in. And he took the tennis ball and he set it on the lectern and didn't say anything about it, didn't refer to it at all, just sat it right there. And he did that every day that he walked into class. And the students had no idea what he was doing or what was going on until about four weeks into class. One of the students fell asleep and he walked over to the tennis ball and grabbed it and a perfect strike nailed the kid right in the head with the tennis ball. Next day, he comes into class with a baseball. <laughs> and the students remain remarkably alert during the whole class for the rest of the semester. And why? Because we expect students to be engaged. We expect them to be involved in a learning experience. And such is the case with our mission here at Homewood. We are one church made up of many people. And we expect a high priority in our mission. Our mission to grow followers of Jesus who love, connect, and serve. And so this whole month, we have been walking through that mission. A couple weeks ago, we talked about placing love as our highest priority, loving God through worship and loving others, and, and the way that we connect an authentic, transparent community. And last week, I intentionally asked our prayer ministry leader, Robert Reed, to speak because prayer is the great work, it's the great strategy of this church. Not because we think it's some magic formula that we can manipulate and work with, but because when we call upon the name of the Lord, when we seek His will and His guidance, then He meets us and He begins to do a mighty work in His name through us. And last week when our kiddos gathered around this stage, and prayed over the leadership here. Weren't you blessed by that? To see the hearts of our children engaging in prayer. Because you see, the reality, church, is not just about what we can do for our kids. It's about inviting them to start being the church today. And I loved that picture last week of seeing our kids gather around and pray. And then today we finish our series on opening day as we've been looking and exploring at what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And as our text, as our picture, as our portrait, we've been walking back to opening day of Christianity in Acts chapter 2. I want you to invite each of you, if you have your Bibles, if you'll be turning to Acts chapter 2. As we go back and explore this text, and I want you to notice once again how engaged the very first Christians were in their new life. Luke says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And see, the early Christians, get this church, the early Christians didn't just understand following Jesus as this acceptance of this new set of beliefs, but it was modeling a new way of life. And if you don't get anything else today, I want you to understand that principle of, of they modeled a new way of life. They saw their teacher, they saw their rabbi, they saw the one who was modeling this life for them, and so they decided that they were going to ascribe and deliberately choose 
to be a part of this way of life? And what did their teacher do? What did their master model? What did he ascribe to be about? He took a path of downward mobility. And as he took that path, as we just looked at in Philippians 2 just a few moments ago, that he became the very, the very nature of a servant. And, and Paul says that, that our attitude, the way that we act and the way that we think should be like that. Now, there are many job descriptions in the kingdom of God, church, many job descriptions. But there's just one title. And that one title is no matter what you do as a follower of Jesus Christ, is that you do it, students, as a servant. Sometimes you model this for us in ways that, that show us new and exciting things. But the call is not just for the students. The call is for all of us as a faith family to model that very descriptor of life, that we too become a servant. But I'm going to contend today for the next few minutes that 20 centuries later, it seems that the American church has created a culture where accepting Jesus is, yes, expected, but you're not expected to necessarily follow him. Or to put it another way, we want Christians to like Jesus, but we don't necessarily expect Christians to be like Jesus. And so when we stop and reflect on this drift that has occurred in our culture, when we stop and think about the fact that is it really possible that we have gotten to a place where, yes, we like Jesus, we may even like him on Facebook, but when we get to the call of being like Jesus, that's a different story. You know, I had a conversation just this past week with another preacher. And every preacher understands this. When you ask, well, how many do you have in in attendance at your church? And you rattle off some number. And then you, you quantify it by saying, well, we have this many active members. And we have this many inactive members. And I want to suggest to you, folks, as we just looked in Acts chapter 2, if you would have said inactive member to the early church, they would have thought, what in the world are you talking about? What does that even mean, inactive member? They would have looked at you like you were crazy. Because the only inactive members in the early church were Ananias and Sapphira, and that's because they were being carried out dead. And so when we stop and reflect on this and we think about that it was assumed on opening day that you were going to be a part of a game, that you just weren't going to put on a jersey and sit on the bench, that you weren't going to just, just, just quietly make yourself available and attend, but it was expected that you actually got in the game and participated and played the game. And every follower of Jesus is called to full-time Christian service. Now, I'm not saying this morning that I believe every follower of Jesus is called to to full-time vocational ministry like God has has called me to do, but I believe that every member is called to full-time Christian service. And so I want to talk just a moment about resisting the drift. I mean, think about that. I mean, what do you want to hear when you meet Jesus? What's the words that you want to hear come out of his mouth when you meet Jesus? You ever thought about that? What do you want to hear? Well done, good and faithful servant. That's the words every student over here should want to hear. That's the words that every person in the west side congregation over here wants to hear, and the east side congregation over here, and whatever y'all, north or south, I don't know what y'all call yourselves here, but everyone wants to hear, well done, good and faithful 
servant. And we have to resist the drift. And here's the drift, church. The church is going to have to make this mentality shift. And I, I say this in my own heart as well. To move from being saved by to being saved for. Now I want you to hear me clearly that nothing about this sermon, nothing about it is going to imply that your work can make you right with God. I'm not, not going to insinuate that today. That your service secures your status with God. Because the only work that can save is the finished work of Jesus, cross, Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen? That's the only work that can save. And we are saved, we're made right with God by atonement and not achievement. Think about Ephesians chapter 2, one of my favorite verses. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Because the reality is, is that we do not work for our salvation, but we do work from our salvation. And we, as a church, our service to God is not the root of our relationship with Him, but it should be the fruit of our relationship with Him. Amen? It should be. And I love that next verse in Ephesians chapter 2. It says, for we are God's workmanship. Some translations say that we're His handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Because, church, when God saved you, he left you here for a bigger purpose than for you and me just to avoid sinning before we die. That he actually made us to exist for him to look good. And I want you to catch this, that we do that by doing good, and it's evidence to the world that God is doing something good in us. And what I want to do is just take a moment to introduce you to some folks who have been praying for you. They've been praying that God will awaken a spirit of service in you. And I want you to open your worship guide, and you can see their faces right there inside of that. I want you to direct your attention to the screen and watch this video. Hey, good morning. My name is Chris Richardson. I'm the ministry leader for outreach and missions on the local team. Uh, we're, it's our job to come up with creative new ways to reach the lost in this community. So if you're uh, into marketing, advertising, event planning, anything like that, uh, we need you on our team. So come see me at the ministry fair. My name is Luke Mastriani. I'm team leader of the First Impressions team. Uh, we're responsible for uh, making people feel welcome, uh, making people feel like they've been uh, received into heaven, and uh, also working in the parking lot and just... Uh, and just greeting first-time attenders. If, you would, uh, if you'd like to learn more about this group, please stop by uh, our booth at the ministry fair. I want you! <laughs> Hello, I'm Doug Raglan, and I'm leading the Tech Arts Ministry. We're responsible for all the audio and video that the church needs. The sound system in the auditorium, the live streaming, what you see on the screens, for shooting videos, editing videos that may be needed from time to time, many of those you've seen on our screens as well. If you're interested in doing any of those types of activities, we can use you in the Tech Arts Ministry. Stop by our table. Is this thing on? All right, I've never auditioned for American Idol before, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm a little nervous if you, you, you understand, but uh, excuse, what? This is not the American Idol audition? I'm not, I'm not, uh, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Kevin Kilpatrick, and I'm the worship leader here at Homewood. Do you love to worship? Do you just look forward to being here on Sunday mornings and being part of our service and lifting your voice and praise to God? If you are, we'd love to have you stop by the booth and let us tell you about some of the things that are going on in the worship ministry, and maybe there's a place for you to join us. You don't have to be a singer. There are a lot of other jobs and responsibilities that need to be taken care of each week for us to have a successful service. So stop by, say hello, and let us tell you a little bit about what's going on in worship. I'm Chance Hallmark, and this is my bride, Lavinia Hallmark, and we are with the Care and Prayer Ministry, and we want you to stop by our booth. If your talent 
is or your passion is for writing folks and encouraging our visitors that come in our doors every week. We have a lot of them. We want to make sure they all feel connected, that they're loved, known, and then they become a part of this family. So come by and stop by our booth at the ministry fair today. Hello, I'm Robert Reed, and I've been chosen to represent the prayer ministry in our church, and basically what we want to do is we want to raise up a congregation of prayer warriors to serve the Lord in our church, and prayer is something that all of us can do and be a part of, and so my invitation to you is to choose to be a part and come and offer yourself to be a part of this prayer team that we're raising up to serve God and to serve our church, and so you can contact me, Robert Reed, anytime, and you can contact the church office, and we can show you how to be a part of what God's doing through prayer in our church. Hello, my name is Brett Walters. For those of you who sleep on Sunday mornings, I'm the guy who gets up and speaks and has the privilege to do that. I also have the privilege of leading our growth track ministry, which is a new ministry here at Homewood to help folks just journey through the process of Love Connect Serve. And we are excited about starting a Catch the Vision class that will be taking place every month. Uh, and this is really going to be a part of our discipleship program here at Homewood. And so if you want to be a part of that, we'd love to talk to you during the ministry fair. Misty Cuthbert would love to hear from you as well. So please uh, come and join us out at the booth. Hi, I'm Jeff Taylor, and I represent the Connect team. I want to welcome you to Homewood and hope that you'll come to the ministry fair and check us out. Thanks. One of our connect groups this past week, you know, took this idea of service uh, to the next level. And I was blessed to receive uh, these pictures from our ladies connect group who just said, you know what, we're going to buy a bunch of pizzas and we're going to go down to Batwell Auditorium where a lot of our homeless friends are staying and we're just going to feed them uh, a meal one night. And uh, you know what, your connect group can do things just like that as well. You know, a lot of times we think, well, you know, do we need to get permission to feed the hungry? No, <laughs> you don't. You can do it. Uh, and, and I'm just blessed to hear examples like this every day. You know, Jesus took a bowl, a bowl of water and a towel. And as we read earlier during our communion time, he washed feet. He made it not about himself, but he made it about serving. Did you notice the other passage that we read first off in Matthew? Matthew chapter 27, where Pilate also took a bowl and a towel. And what did Pilate do with his bowl and his towel? Scripture says when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but instead the uproar was starting, he took water and he washed his hands in front of the crowd and he said, I'm innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. Pilate took his bowl of water and his towel. And he said, I don't want to even have anything to do with this. And the question this morning is, what are you going to do with your bowl and your towel? You're going to wash feet? Or are you going to say, I don't want anything to do with this? And so the invitation today is simply, how can we help you in that area? What can we do for you? And if you have a need this morning, if you need to claim the name of Christ for the first time, we're here to do that. If you need prayers of this church, we want to help you as well. Will you come as we stand and sing? Change my heart, O oh God. God. Make Change it ever true. Change. 